Good evening, and welcome to another community conversation. And we've done more than 30 of these virtual conversations with members of our, of our community over uh, from this point to last spring. And what began as community conversations for COVID-19 have expanded to community conversations in general as we reach tens of thousands of Aurorans and beyond virtually. Tonight, we celebrate Black History Month. I am joined by eight dynamic leaders in this community who have made history themselves. As I said last week, when I issued the Black History Month proclamation during the city council meeting, well, February is a time to highlight the black community. It, is, it certainly isn't the only time to do so. And we are committed to equity and inclusion 12 months out of the year. And when you know the stories of our guests tonight, it is clear that the black history in Aurora's history, in Illinois history, in American history is the work and in the world history, it, it, it can be confirmed that we should celebrate this every month. Growing up in Aurora, I knew of the names of I icons like Marie Wilkinson, the legendary Reverend Robert Webby, Wesby, who marched with Dr. King, and the trailblazing Dr. Charles Ponquinet, and my very own cousin, his history, Clint Mays as the first, the first, actually he's my uncle, the first African-American police officer hired on the Royal Police Department. And as, as I, I became an adult, I realized just how important they were to the collective and to us, all of us personally. You know, at that time, I never knew or ever understood that, you know, one day I'd step into the illustrious group of, of history makers with my own election as, as the first African-American mayor in the city of Aurora in, a hundred, in its 180 year history. Today, I know what it's like to be the first, but more importantly, I know what it means to be, to, to make sure I am not the last. And, and, let, and let me say that that's so important. I mean, I, I recognize that I'm not the first, when I say I'm the first African-American elected in the city of Aurora in 180 year history, I don't say that for the purpose of just saying I'm the first. I say it for the purpose of, of recognizing that being the first opens doors for others to follow behind us. Others that grew up in neighborhoods similar to mine or maybe similar to yours. You know, maybe you have a single mother, maybe, maybe you don't. Maybe you grew up in, in low-income housing, public housing, maybe you did. But at least we have the opportunity to have other black and brown boys, black, black in particular, because we know our, our young black boys struggle. You know, we open the doors and give them opportunities to follow in all of our, all of our footsteps. And I'll say black women too, because I have, I have a number of uh, very, very powerful and, and successful black women here on the screen, on the screen with us. So um, to my guests tonight, let me introduce them and, and I'll have them share a little bit about themselves, you know. Yeah, you know, and we're and we're we're going to start off with uh, with uh, our uh, alderman, Shakita Hart Burns, and you tell him why is it that you're on this screen today, and we are calling you a first, Alderman Hart. Thank you, thank you so much, kind sir, Miss Mayor. Um, Aurora gave me the privilege over 30 years ago to be elected the first. I'm told uh, in the western suburbs to be elected in city government, the first alderman in the history. I feel that um, my move from Florida over 40 years ago gave me that opportunity to get involved more in the community because in Florida, my daddy, mom, they were the, our restaurant was a holding place. Everybody came there to be held up, but they also went to the church where my daddy was Mr. Preacher Man and he did all that he knew how to do to help our community. I have been greatly involved in the Aurora community from day one when I moved to Aurora. I rode around trying to find out where is it that African-American and I found Mr. Amir, your neck of the woods, the Grand Boulevard Center. And at the Grand Boulevard Center, I learned that this was a melting pot of everybody's children coming there to have a good time. I started to volunteering there every day with Ruby McGee. I know you remember that name, remember that a name. member of Progressive, a member of Progressive. And uh, I did that for years, just making sure that our kids had the opportunity. I got involved with the YWCA and I was able at that point to get deeply involved where I could do programs there for our children and then taking the kids there to learn to swim. Now, that was one of the reasons I got involved. But later on in life, I became a licensed evangelist missionary under the great Bishop William Haven Bonner, who had pastored and founded Greater Mount Island 72 years before he passed. And I got deeply, more deeply involved in the community, but I have been, mm, been so blessed to have lived in Aurora all these years and been so blessed to 
find my first job at Jane's Funeral Service. I was his first employee. And when he got ready to look for another location, guess what I did? Picked him up, took him over on Hill Avenue. That land was available. And we made a deal on that day. He just didn't know how bad it was going to affect him. Sherman was there for the groundbreaking of Jane's Funeral Home. And when he signed the paper, I gave him my letter that I no longer could work. I wanted to see that business flourish. As an elected official, I was not going to jeopardize me nor him. But you see a beautiful establishment there now called the Jane's Funeral Home. And that has been my baby, my birth child. Just thankful that um, I've been elected by the people of Aurora. And thankful that I had the chance to meet all of you and be able to conversate with you all. Because truly, we are better together than we are apart. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, you know, you had mentioned a uh, gentleman by the name of Sherman, and we know him also as Alderman at large, Sherman Jenkins. Uh, I want to introduce him next. Sherman uh, is a, also a city councilman here in the city of Aurora. Sherman, can you tell our, our, our listeners and our, our watching audience, why are you, what were you the first up? Well, I'm, um, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm from, the, from Woodlawn. Uh, in Chicago. Uh, grew up there and I came out here in the early early 80s uh, from my young family at that time and uh, came to Aurora uh, and I was working in a company uh, within the area and uh, from there uh, I eventually uh, came into economic development. Now I originally was in public relations and um, uh, I ran into a gentleman uh, who was, would be my predecessor, uh, Paul Boric, who was the executive director of uh, economic development here. And he and I got to talking and uh, he said, hey, you know, it looks like I'm gonna have in my budget to bring on an assistant and I need someone that, you know, I think, you know, you would work out very well. And so eventually I came on and, uh, worked as assistant director and worked on a number of different projects uh, early on as assistant director. And then in um, 1999, uh, Paul left and uh, I, ne I never forget, he came into the office, my office and said, hey, uh, I'm, I'm gonna be leaving. And I'm like, where are you going, vacation again? He said, no, I'm going to work at a local bank and, I told them that uh, I recommend you as the executive director. I'm like, yo, yeah, well, I'm gonna just be real. I just say, yeah, right, okay. <laughs> They're gonna uh, appoint me as executive director, okay. Uh, little did I know, the, uh, the board held a meeting uh, early in the morning, that's when we hold our uh, economic development board meetings. The first time in over so many years that we had a full house 17 board members, all in attendance, and it was 17-0 to make me the executive director. So from there, as they say, uh, it's, all, uh, it's all history, and um, worked there at, uh, until 20, 2012 when I uh, retired, and I went and wrote a book, and uh, then I had a certain gentleman reaching out to me saying, uh, you know, your book is done now, you know, and I need some help. Uh, and, uh, you know, I want to, you know, be the first person to be a person of color to be mayor. And then, yeah, you know, I couldn't think of a better person to, to take my spot as alderman at large. And I was like, what? An alderman? Are you out of your mind? I don't want people calling me. And he said, no, 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 alderman at large. I said, wait, wait, cool. don't tell all the secrets, brother. Don't tell all the trade secrets. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I took the, you know, I, I said, okay, you know, and uh, and I came on and I tell you, it has been a uh, wonderful opportunity, uh, continuing to work with the city, knowing a number of you that I've met over the period of time. Uh, a lot of us go way back. And uh, so that's, that's how I came into being here. And I am so glad that uh, the Lord has blessed me to be able to be in Aurora, Illinois. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, um, as the first African-American of the Economic Development Commission here in the city of Aurora, thanks for all you've done to get us to the point to where we're at now, to where we can build on, on that foundation. 
talking about building on, on foundations, uh, the uh, superintendent of, uh, of, of District 131, you know, where I went to school myself, um, I, 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 I bleed black and red, if anybody ever heard me, you know, I'm, I'm proud to be from, from the, the school, from that school district. And, um, you know, I want to introduce next uh, Dr. Norell. Tell us what you are the first of here uh, in the city of Aurora. Good evening, everyone. I am the first uh, female uh, superintendent mm -hmm. after 170 years, approximately, in the oldest school district in the state of Illinois, the first female um, superintendent uh, for the uh, East Aurora School District 131. And I am, I can now say uh, that I am not the newest person of this group to the Aurora area. Dr. Talley thankfully came along and he took that title. So I've been here now three years and it has been the best decision ever uh, to come to East Aurora School District 1, 131 and to come to the city of Aurora. It has been really a wonderful uh, three years, even with all the hard work. Um, I am originally from uh, South Cook County. Um, I was born and raised between the South side of Chicago. You said Woodland, um, Alderman Jenkins. I'm from South Shore, so I'm not too far apart. We say we're from the East side. If you're from Chicago, you know about that. Um, and then from the South suburbs. So I am truly um, new to the Kane County area and the city of Aurora. Um, I have been in education for 25 years. Um, I, after leaving the South suburbs, I went to live in Virginia where I attended Hampton University, which was also a wonderful experience, and then came back home to start my career in education. And in the field of education for the past 25 years, I've held probably every position, that's what people don't know, um, as I came through that uh, profession. I have been a sub, a classroom aide. I've been a summer custodian, clerical teacher, assistant principal, uh, assistant superintendent, and now the very proud principal of East, uh, the proud superintendent of East Aurora School District 131. So it has been quite a journey, um, but I'm so grateful to have been um, the chosen one from our board of education who has been tremendously support supportive for my time here and onboarding me. So I'm just happy to be amongst everyone here and, and definitely um, happy to have been chosen as the first female. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, and, and um, black female, you know, and then it's first female, you're black female here holding it down at District 131, taking our school district to the next level. And I'm not hating on any other folks from, you know, 129 and 204 here. I just got to show some love to my black and red, you know, not, you know, and I, I love the black and gold and I love the, the blue and red from the west side, black and gold from the far east side, black and gold and black and uh, uh, gold and green. You have, you have a couple colors over there, a couple high schools, but yeah. Um, uh, you know, I, I got to show love to uh, East Aurora School District. You know, we, 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 we worked hard, you know, to come to where we're at now. And Dr. Norell here has, has been the leading force in making sure of our kids on the East side have, have the same equal playing field, the equity as the, as, you know, throughout the rest of the rest of the school, the rest of the city. Absolutely. So, uh, absolutely. So thank you for all you do. Let's go on to my brother, Bill Powell. Now, 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 Brother Bill, you see what his name is, Bill Powell, you see N-O-B-L-E behind his name there. That's National Organization of Black Law Enforcement Officers, mm -hmm. you know, which uh, he participates in. But why is that, Bill? What were you the first of here in the city of Aurora? Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I actually was uh, uh, the first uh, African-American sergeant in the history of the Aurora Police Department. I was the first African-American lieutenant in the history of the Aurora Police Department. I was the first African-American commander in the history of the Royal Police Department. And finally, I was the first African-American uh, chief of police here for the, the, the city of Aurora. Uh, like the uh, two uh, people before me, I'm a Southside transplant, born and raised on the South side of uh, Chicago, um, Greenwood neighborhood, 95th and Halstead, uh, educated in the Chicago public school system, uh, left there, uh, uh, a little bit after graduation and uh, joined uh, the United States Air Force. Uh, got out of the Air Force in 1974, went to work for the city of Chicago for three months, the Department of, of Buildings, and uh, absolutely hated it. Had to get out of Chicago. So uh, at that time, I had a friend who was actually taking a test for the Department of Corrections. 
of the juvenile division out of St. Charles. And um, I came out with him, took the test, and almost was hired on the spot. Um, went back, quit my job for the city, moved out here to Aurora, and Aurora's been my home ever since. I used to consider myself a Chicagoan. I'm an Auroran through and through. Um, so it was, uh, um, it's a long journey, you know, but, I, but I, 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 I've been blessed and, and, and thankful. Uh, like I think I've worked with almost everybody. I haven't worked with the superintendents, but everybody else here on the panel, I certainly have, uh, we've worked together for, for, for many years. And uh, I'm just glad I was able to, uh, um, you know, uh, have a little, a little, uh, You know, I hope I just I, I did a little bit to to make this city, and I think I did. But I, I don't like talking about myself, but yeah. make the city a, a a little and the Royal Police Department, you know, a little bit better. So uh, I was grateful, you know, for former Mayor Tom Weisner uh, when he when he, he when he tapped me on the shoulder. It was certainly uh, a surprise to me, even though I had applied for the job. I certainly didn't think I was going to get the job, but uh, it was a surprise for me, and uh, I enjoyed the almost three years that uh, before I retired uh, 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 serving as citizens of Aurora. Absolutely, absolutely, no, no, you. and uh, I was uh, an alderman, you know, throughout the time you served here in the city of Aurora on the council at the same time with Alderman Hart Burns, and, and I, I'll be one of the first to say, and I'm sure Alderman Hart Burns will agree with me, you did a you did a great job, you know, and uh, yeah. creating equity here in, in our city and diversity. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's go on talking about you know police departments to uh, Liz Robinson Chan. Now. Uh, Liz, tell us what you are the first of. Everybody sees that you're sitting there with a with a uniform on right now uh, for APD, Royal Police Department. What are you the first of? Well, I am currently the first female African American sergeant in the history of APD. I was promoted in June of 2012, and I'm currently the first female African American lieutenant. I was promoted on July 11th of last year, 2020, and that also happens to be my daughter's birthday. Wow. Um, I am also originally from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, like Alderman Hart Burns, where I was born. Um, we moved to the South suburbs when my brothers and I were still young. I graduated from Dwight David Eisenhower in Blue Island, Illinois. Um, I received my bachelor's degree from North Central College in Naperville. And then I began my career here at APD in 1993. I completed my MBA in leadership and management in 2006 while I was still employed full-time as a police officer. I was also the first in the history of my family to obtain a master's degree in leadership and management. And you know, it wasn't because I really needed the degree, but it was because I was told that I couldn't do it. So I felt like I had to a point. Mm -hmm. As far as any badges that I can remember, in February of 2019, I was awarded the Outstanding Community Leadership Award, as a matter of fact, from the Black History Community Committee. Um, Boys to Men awarded me with the Phenomenal Woman of the Year Award. Thank you, Mr. Muhammad. Um, mm -hmm. 2017, um, I've received several commendations and letters of appreciation and things of that sort throughout my career, um, including efforts at Henry Pratt, which you know was probably one of the biggest incidents in the history, if not the most prevalent in the, in the history of Aurora. And also we had to deal with the COVID crisis. So I had a big hand in that as well. Uh, right before you, Mayor um, Irvin, I think that it was Mayor Wisner who awarded me the Hometown Hero Award for participation in the World Games. Um, I am also a member of Noble with Bill Powell, who is also our vice president. And I'm a member of the Police Benevolent, where I just stepped down as secretary after eight years last month. I volunteered throughout my stint, um, Special Olympics, um, Walking for Hope, the Aurora Sports Festival, things of that sort. And just recently within the past couple of months, few months, um, Alderman Hartburns and I found out that we are related biologically via my maternal grandmother's side of the family. Wow. So she is my Aunt Shakita biologically. <laughs> Oh, a lot of people didn't know Everybody's that. Everybody's Aunt Shakita, though. <laughs> 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 really, really yes. Isn't that something? That is. <laughs> well, thank you very much for all you do, uh, Lieutenant uh, Robinson Chan. 
You're, yeah. you're great for a roar and you make us proud. Thank you know, you, let's go on, you know, and, and you, you hear a lot of folks, you know, that say that they didn't start off in Aurora. They're going to hear from only one other person on the uh, screen that was born and raised in Aurora. We'll get to him a little bit later, but we have uh, one of our newest uh, individuals that uh, just came in and are part of the, you know, Aurora family now, Dr. Talley. Dr. Talley, uh, what are you the first of, brother? Well, Mayor Irvin, thank you very much. I am the first Black African-American uh, superintendent of Indian Prairie School District, and I'm very proud to be the superintendent of Indian Prairie School District. You may, your heart may be red and Black with uh, East Aurora, but you're an honorary member of Indian Prairie. I'll just say that way. <laughs> I'll take that. I will take Dr. that. Dr. Norell cannot keep you away from saying that right now. I'll be competing with her in that way. Um, I, as you mentioned, I am the newest member here. I'm new having arrived from the Washington DC area where I spent most of my adult life. And I think my journey to here has been varied and I have enjoyed that ride. I moved to Washington DC after college I worked as an educator in three school systems around Washington, and those systems fall within the top 25 largest in the nation. I've been a teacher, I've been a principal, I've been a system administrator, and as Dr. Norell mentioned, I think I've had many, uh, many jobs, uh, except I haven't done transportation. Uh, I spent time in Boston, where I, where I did my graduate work. I was a principal in New York when 9-11 happened. I am the proud son of James and Doretha Talley, two people who taught me about honor, truth, and treating people with respect, dignity, and with kindness. I had the opportunity and great fortune of being born into a military family, having lived across the United States and throughout Europe. Uh, I have had multiple um, badges, including the Civilian Career Service Award from the Office of the Secretary of Defense for my work there, a Certificate of Special Recognition from Sen Senator Benjamin Cardin from Maryland for my work with military families. But I think most importantly, my badge that I hold um, tight is when, it's not mine really, it's when students receive their diplomas. It's it, knowing that I spend a little bit of time helping children earn their diplomas, whatever little I can do to make that happen is the biggest badge for me and the most important. And I'm now beginning to enjoy living here in Indian Prairie, an area in Naperville and Aurora. Um, our schools cover both areas. And I'm be just beginning to experience what all the great things that there are here. And I look forward to what I can learn and the opportunities to work with each one of you. So far, I have just heard great stories and I look forward to working with you in the future. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Absolutely, and thank you, Dr. Talley, for, uh, for joining the Aurora family. We welcome you with open arms, brother. And I, and I accept that, that honorary uh, Indian Prairie uh, uh, designation. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm trying not to make eye contact with Dr. Norell down there, but you know, I gotta show love <laughs> I got to show love throughout throughout the city of Aurora. Don't you look know. her way. Just stay, <laughs> don't look her way at all. You can visit, but just know where your home is. Know, know your home. <laughs> my home and my heart. My home and my heart. Well, uh, let's go on. You know, we're all public servants here, you know, in the city of Aurora. And we all stepped up and said, we want to make a difference. And that's why we're here, you know. Uh, and we have a young woman on that, you know, has stepped up and made a difference in public service and in our in our community. Also, not necessarily from Aurora, but has made a huge impact in Aurora. Ms. Angie Thomas, what were you the first up? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and good evening, everyone. So I was the first African-American woman elected to the Kane County Board. And um, there must be something about that uh, 180 number because I was the first um, after 180 years of the county's founding in 1836. Um, elected in 2016, and I just com uh, I completed uh, one term in 2020. Um, like many on the panel here, I too am a transplant. I'm from Silver Spring, um, and like Dr. Talley, I lived in Washington, D.C. Um, for about 10 years prior to coming to Aurora. 
Um, my Florida connection uh, is the University of Miami where I went to um, undergraduate school, went home to DC, uh, the DC area for uh, graduate school at American University and got an MBA. Um, I got to Aurora through um, one of Aurora's own, uh, born and raised on the West side, um, who actually is on our panel and I'll let him introduce himself later, but um, I got married and moved to Aurora. And what's funny when people find out about, um, you know, I was from DC and Juan was, uh, lived, was from Aurora. Everyone like says, yeah, you moved to Aurora? Mm -hmm. But um, I did indeed move to Aurora. Um, and my first, I first got involved in the community through the Quad County Urban League. Um, all of us on this call and many watching and listening know Theodia Gillespie who still heads the Urban League. Um, she gave me my first opportunity here as the director of external affairs. Um, I had done government relations and policy work in DC. And um, there was a fit with the Urban League at the time. Um, and since then, I, um, trans I transitioned my government affairs and uh, policy work into a nonprofit space and um, have been in nonprofit work since then, um, working for um, a number of uh, organizations in Aurora and the Fox Valley. Um, and I've, you know, had the opportunity to work with almost everyone on this panel. Um, and it's, you know, it's been a real pleasure um, making Aurora home. And, and I tell people that in DC, people, everyone is important. Everyone is smart. Everyone feels like they're doing important work because most people there are, are working for the government in some capacity, a lot of people. Um, and every, but it's very, um, it's a place where everybody's trying to get ahead. Everyone's trying to make the next move. But when I came to Aurora, I quickly saw that this is a big, small town, even as the second largest city in the state. And you feel the impact, especially on the, on the west side of Aurora, where I live. You feel the impact of people being involved or people not being involved. And so um, I've really, um, I, enjoyed uh, contributing to the community. I've had the um, opportunity to serve on a number of boards and um, most recently the Civil Service Commission, um, which I'm learning a lot about. And um, so, so even though I'm a transplant, um, you know, Aurora is home. Um, I'm getting used to the, the winters. I don't like them, but uh, <laughs> getting used to it. Well, thank you very much, Angie. I, for one, am glad that when um, you and, and and Juan got married, you guys decided to call Aurora your home versus D.C. As far, in my opinion, there is no real choice. You made your, your home there. You know, Aurora was the right choice. Um, and, and that goes to, and I'll finish up with, you know, uh, your husband, Juan Thomas, who's on the screen with us, like myself, born and raised in the city of Aurora uh, and have been doing work ever since, you know, we, uh, he was uh, old enough to, to walk and talk and, you know, uh, volunteering in Aurora and doing things to help move, you know, Aurora forward, move the needle forward. And uh, we've appreciated the work that he's done in the community. Juan, will you tell our, our listeners and, uh, and folks watching, what are you the first of, brother? Thank you, Mayor. Irvin, good to see you and all of my fellow panelists. Um, I'm the first man to make the good decision to marry Angie Clay Thomas. <laughs> You're round of applause for that one. I love that. I love that. That's why I was here. There's more. There's more. I love it. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Well, three years before I did that, I had the honor of being the first African American to be elected to an Aurora Township office when I was the Aurora Township clerk, an office that I was recently reappointed to uh, back in August of last year. Um, to fill the vacancy of a mutual friend of all of ours, the Honorable Judge Reggie Campbell, who's now the second African-American judge here in Kane County. Um, what I've loved about this conversation is hearing all of the stories that really talks about your journey and how all of you um, got to where you are today. Um, my journey is similar to the mayor's, born and raised in Aurora, um, somewhere along the line, wanted to, um, give back to my community. 
Um, I came from a, a parent, two parent home, blessed to be raised by two loving parents. One um, has spent and still is giving her uh, time and commitment to a, the AID, which is the Association for Individual Development here in Aurora, where she, my mom served as vice president, but also the son of LTs. Uh, my dad spent 25 years building a business in this community. And people today still tell me he had the best barbecue in the Western suburbs. It was that tradition that really nurtured me. And that tradition, along with the, the tradition of growing up at, at Gales Memorial Missionary Baptist Church, um, and people like Prentice Thompson, the late Prentice Thompson, people like George Marshall, people like Warren Cannon, who was a deacon at Maine Baptist, those people kind of nurtured and kind of groomed me to want to come back to my community and serve. And so I was honored to be on the Western Aurora School Board at the young age of 25. I'm told I was the youngest person ever elected there. And now I, that was 26 years ago, um, but honored to be the clerk for um, five years and, and glad to be there now. As clerk, I had the honor of trying to automate the office to put all of our information online, our minutes, our board reports and things like that. And so to this day, if you go back and look at the Aurora Township website, you'll see that we have a record of our, um, of our governance and our work that date back to 2006, 2007, when I was elected and put that in place. And you know, for me, and I think this is true for all of us, um, I didn't wanna just be something, I wanted to do something. And I've tried to work um, in the law, in ministry, and in business to actually make an impact. And so today um, I sit here tonight um, with all of you as the past president of the National Bar Association where I was honored to serve the legal profession of black lawyers across the country on a national level. And recently, and I'll conclude with this, um, had a door open to me, Mayor Irvin, through another mutual friend of ours, the Honorable Vince Cornelius, who was the first African-American to serve as the Illinois State Bar President here in Illinois. Because of his mentorship and brotherhood, I was recently elected by the Illinois State Bar to be a delegate for the State Bar to the American Bar Association House of Delegates. That's the governing body of all lawyers across the country. And I'm only the second black lawyer to ever be elected by the Illinois Bar um, to be in that role. So I take office in um, August of this, this summer, but I got there because of the first who was Vince Cornelius. And so um, I'm very honored to um, continue the work of our profession. And I currently work as an of counsel partner at the, at the national firm called Quinteros Perito Wood and Boyer, which is the largest minority women-owned law firm in the country. You know, Juan, thank you very much, Juan. We appreciate all you do for the community, brother, and what you are doing for the legal community as well as a, as a lawyer myself. Um, although I don't have an opportunity to practice anymore as, as I'm mayor full time. But you said something very profound. You said, I don't simply want to be something. I want to do something. You know, and as, as we sit here on, on the screen talking about being the first and in 2021, uh, still talking about the fact that we all were the first of something here in the United States. And, and you know, I talked to Sherman and uh, Bill Powell a number of times of them coming up in the 60s, back when uh, Dr. King was, was still marching and what, what black folks had to go through for just equality back then. And we're still talking today in 2021 60 years later about being the first in something, you know, and I know we, all of us on the screen don't do it just to be the first. We don't wanna be something, we want to do something. We wanna make a difference. You know, uh, in her poem, Still I Rise, Dr. Maya Angelou said, I am the hope and the dream of the slave. In that phrase, you feel the pride, but also know the pain is also present. What we went through to get to where we're at, but still I rise. You know, when you introduce yourself, I'm sorry, when you, when you talk about the honor of being, being the first, you know, during your introduction, you know, there's a joy in that, and there's a feeling of pride in that, but also a burden in that. Can you, can you talk to me a little bit 
Bill Powell about, you know, the burden that, that you might have felt being the first, even though you knew you want you want you want to be the police chief and you want to be the police chief to do a good job to be the best police chief that the world department has, has ever seen. The reality is, and you dealt with it going from sergeant to lieutenant to commander to chief. What, 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 what was that burden? What was that pressure you felt in that position? Well, I always tell the, the story when, when, when the mayor pulled me aside and, and offered me the position uh, after we talked for about 15 minutes and he left the room. It actually felt like that uh, he, he had dropped a 2,000 pound load on my shoulders um, because I sat there and realized the, the, what the responsibility of being the chief of police was. And um, um, and if and, and I actually didn't second guess myself in, in, in a sense, but, you know, I, I questioned myself, can I can I pull this off and not screw it up, basically? You know, and, and that was my fear because I knew I had a responsibility for everybody else that came behind me. You know, if, if, if being the first, if I'm in this position and um, I didn't do a good job, messed it up, then there's a propensity sometimes for, for the mass to basically say, see, I told you so, you know, he, he couldn't do it. An African-American couldn't do it. So, I mean, that was, that was, that was a huge burden. Now, I had, I had a lot, lot of confidence in myself. Um, I knew at the time, I knew at the time when I was picked as a chief, I wasn't going to be around a long, a long period of time. Uh, that's one reason why I didn't think the mayor was going to choose me because I'd already talked about retiring at the time he had turned around and, and, and tapped me to, uh, to that position. So he and I talked about some things that, that I want to accomplish that he would like to see in, in the police department. And we knew it wasn't going to be easy, you know, because of longstanding issues, uh, longstanding uh, uh, policies and stuff that, that existed that needed to turn around and change. And I think that's really what the reason, at least that's what he told me, uh, that, that he chose me because he said he knew I wasn't afraid of change. So, um, you know, I, when, when, you, when you have a responsibility like this, sometimes I guess you do sit there and, and um, you know, you second guess. I tried to put a command staff together that wasn't like me. You know, I didn't want anybody to sit there and saying, yes, 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 yes. And, and, and a lot of times in our meetings, command meetings and stuff, they said, no, 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 no. And uh, they actually changed my mind on several issues that we, that, that, uh, we, were, we were faced with. And um, uh, so, I mean, that made me and the department, you know, uh, 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 better. So you have to surround yourself with, with people that you know are um, capable. And my biggest thing, my biggest thing, and I said this from day one, but when I became a police chief, I talked to every police officer. And the first thing I said was, I'm holding all of you accountable to the citizens of Aurora. I'm accountable to them. You're accountable to them also. And that was, that was my, my, uh, my mantra for the close to three years that I was on the police department. I probably passed over in the three, the, the, the three years I was a police chief, I probably passed over more people in my three years than the previous chiefs probably did in 20 years because I felt that, that people weren't doing the job that they were supposed to do out there in the community. Now, some of those people I passed over for promotion, they finally got promoted. I, I sat down with them. I told them what they had to do, what they needed to, what they needed to prove to me that they could do out in the community. And, and I, I promoted, uh, uh, I had to, you know, I wound up promoting one or two of them. Some of them didn't get promoted. As a matter of fact, filed a federal lawsuit against me for not promoting them which, uh, you know, of course we prevailed because, you know, we had all the documentation and everything that, 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 that we needed to, uh, to succeed in that, that, that lawsuit. But I wanted to make the point to the, the, the whole police department that, that we are absolutely here for the community, that we are part of the community. And that's what we're seeing today. I mean, across the country, we're seeing where there's no trust in a lot of police departments because of what police officers are doing out in the community, the negative things they're doing out there in the community. And that's, that's causing, and, and, and specifically the communities of color. And, and that's causing uh, a lot of the issues that uh, we saw pop up uh, uh, this summer, you know, in, in larger communities and communities like ours. So, um, so it was a, it, it, it was a huge responsibility, and it, it, it was a big burden. But again, I think uh, in, in the end, I, like I said, I don't like to pat myself on, on, on the shoulders, but I think that we made a, a positive impact uh, uh, during my time, you know, in the police department. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, so let me let me change gears and talk about education a little bit, Dr. Norell. When we, when you think about that statement that uh, Brother Juan Thomas made, 
that I don't simply want to be something. I want to do something, you know, and, and you think about the weight of being the first female and black female, you know, to uh, be the superintendent of District 131. And when you came into this district, recognizing the challenges that we had uh, being a district that was a majority minority district, black and brown, um, what kind of weight did you feel on your shoulders? And do you still feel weight on your shoulders today? Absolutely. I think until the day that I retire, I'll feel the weight uh, on my shoulders. And I think that um, when I reflected on the statement um, from Dr. Myangelo in terms of looking at what, what that dream was really all about, you know, I think that um, Juan Thomas summed it up perfectly. And you mentioned it earlier. It's, it's not about power and position. It's always about the purpose. It's always about staying focused and being mission driven because since the time of slavery, that's the only way that things have become better is that we've remained focused and mission driven and, and not uh, been allowed to um, be swayed off of that. And it, it goes without saying, and I think it, it particularly this year, um, not just in education, but globally, you know, we have felt the impact of a pandemic that has basically been uh, insurmountable for so many people around the world. However, um, when you look at minority communities, it has even had a greater impact. And so when we really have to be in charge to keep people focused, that, that's a lot of a, a weight to do that. And then of course, there are those who often, maybe because of who you are, don't necessarily um, have the same faith and confidence, but um, if you stay attached to the mission and your purpose and why you uh, started down this path, which I think all of us constantly reflect on, I think that is what gives you strength to overcome and to, you know, come out not just successfully, but on, but on top. And so, um, you know, I've always been one that my mother was a 30 plus year educator and just remembering from whence you came, I think that helps to give you strength to continue on and to, to stay focused and to stay grounded. Um, even when everyone else would have you believe you're crazy, you just, you just you know, keep grounded and keep forward. So I absolutely would uh, concur with what's been said about it's not about the power and the position that you've achieved. It's always about the mission, so. That, you know, that's a very good point. And something that you said, you know, uh, you struck a chord with me. You said, always remember where you've come from, but when you've come. That's my grandfather used to tell me that never forget where you've come from, always remember. And if you do, you'll always know where you're going. That's right. <laughs> you, never, you never forget where you come from, you always know where you're going. Right. You know, I, I wanna ask Sherman Jenkins a question, Alderman Jenkins for a second, because he and I have had conversations about what it was like, especially in Chicago in the 60s, you know, uh, you know, during, you know, some of the riots, you know, the marching for equality and some of the things that he had to deal with, with growing up and then coming to Aurora and then having someone walk into a room and say, to, to him, you know, I'd like you to be the leader of an organization inside a city government and him saying, oh, no, it wouldn't be me. But others believe that it could be you. You know, um, what, what pressure did you have recognizing where you come from and, and what you were about to, to engage in as a leader of economic development in the city of Aurora? What kind of pressure on your shoulders did that put on your brother? And, and how long did you feel that pressure? Well, it, it, it began from day one. I remember sitting in the, in the office and as uh, Bill Powell said, you know, you have this thing in your mind, don't screw this up, you know, because we had begun uh, making some moves in Aurora. And, um, you know, I wanted to keep it going, but as, as Juan Thomas said, you know, I just didn't want the position, I wanted to make things happen. And so one of the things I always stressed to my staff was that we're here to make things happen. Uh, and we, and I, and I kept that in mind and, and just worked diligently to really work to make Aurora be what I always felt it could be when I came here. Uh, it was back when I came here, you know, people talked about Aurora as an old smokestack, blue collar town. Um, and then the early eight, 90s, uh, you had the, the gangs and, you know, I, it, was, it was something where you wanted to 
to make things happen so that people will feel proud to be from Aurora. Now for me, coming from the South side of Chicago and coming here, you know, I just felt that, you know, the sky was the limit. And so uh, I'll never forget, um, uh, you know, the, the other thing I had was from different uh, developers and, uh, and different people who were doing, trying to do development in Aurora. Because of what I did as assistant director, working in the community, in the neighborhoods, they felt that I was going to shift the focus off of development, uh, 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 business parks and, and whatnot, and just start focusing on the, uh, the, uh, the neighborhoods. Well, we proved them that wrong, that we could do, we could do both and we did it. And um, so I think from, for me, in terms of the, the, the pressure, as we began to have success after success after success, it just fueled in me to do more. And I'll never forget the one project that we did. Uh, it was called um, Chicago Premium Outlet Mall. That little bitty project there. <laughs> that little bitty. And I never forget how we were telling people about this mall that we were trying to lure here. And people told us basically we were crazy. Uh, I had one top person that told me there's no, there's no upscale outlet malls coming to Aurora because nobody in Aurora has got any money to go to an outlet mall. And we just ignored it. And we kept working towards, and so when it happened, it was something that, you know, people's, their, their jaws dropped. But that was the type of thing that began to, to where you could say, if you can do that, you can do other things. And so we went bigger. And we were the first to put together the first master plan for downtown Aurora. Uh, so if anything, you have that weight, but when you start getting those successes, because it's based on not just wanting the position, but you wanna make things happen. You wanna do some things. You, you, it's not about the title and sitting around, you know, people say, oh yeah, in economic development, you guys got a great to sit there, go play golf, drink coffee, da 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 da. <laughs> no, it, it wasn't that. And, and the last thing is I, I always, the, because there were times when people talked about Aurora, you know, oh, you from Aurora, oh my God, you haven't gotten shot yet. You know, oh, those kind of things just, just drive me crazy. So when we would go to these different, uh, like International Shopping Center Convention, it was a thrill. It was, it was, it pumped me up because we wanted to come in and we want to outdo any other community in the area. Uh, people, it was legendary that myself and uh, the economic development director of a city just to the east of here, we had a running feud because I was going to outdo her she was trying to outdo me. But I think our record shows that we did pretty good. And still I rise. Mm -hmm. You said, what you said was, you know, even though people have told you over the years that you couldn't accomplish things, it's like the outlet mall. You can't bring an outlet mall as, as economic director to the city of Aurora, yet you did it. And still I rise. You know, Liz Robinson Chan, Lieutenant, you said something earlier. You said uh, that, you know, you didn't necessarily have to get a particular degree, but someone told you you couldn't. And you said, no, 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 let me show you that I can, which I'm sure many of us have, have dealt with, you know, on the screen, just because people have told you that you can't. And you know, you know, uh, we have to work 10 times harder sometimes, you know, to show that we can. Not, and not, uh, just, not just to say we can, as Juan said, just to be something, but to show that it can be done. What you know, what weight do you have, you know, on your shoulders being the first uh, African-American woman ever in the history of the city of Aurora being in command in our police department, in a police department, which is normally a male, you know, uh, run uh, in a department. Uh, how, what kind of pressure does that put on you being the first African-American woman? Well, I would say as far as burdens, um, first of all, the burden of being a black female is great. It's huge, Mr. Mayor. Sometimes I feel like those are two of the biggest strikes against me, um, especially in a 
predominantly male white society. I feel like I have to always cross my T's and dot my I's. I sometimes feel like I have to work four times as hard as my counterparts for not even a fraction of the credit. I've also learned that in my experience that the same rules and standards don't always apply to everyone equally. Um, I've learned the good and bad about giving people the respect, appreciation, and acknowledgement they deserve, especially working with my troops. Um, but this goes for people above me and below me as well. Um, no matter what I endure or whatever transpires, I, I know that it's of the utmost importance that I set a positive example and I continue to do the, the right thing every day. Um, I have to work hard and persevere in order to help pave the way for those who will follow behind me. Um, I've been told that as a black woman, we don't look the same, we don't act the same, we don't have many of the same experiences. However, on the flip side of that, we share a common bond through some of those experiences. I feel that I've broken through many barriers, um, but not by my efforts alone. I have to say that first of all, first and foremost, there's God, who's my father, my protector, my healer, my teacher, my inspiration, my life. Um, I know that in my heart that I would not be here if it were not for his grace and mercy because I've overcome so many obstacles, Mr. Mayor. I then have my family and friends, mentors, colleagues um, who loved me, provided support when I needed it, helped mold me into the, the person that I am today. I've definitely come a long way. And I always try to remember like one of my pastors just recently said, he reminded us in a sermon he just gave last week, he says, we must remain humble or we will very well stumble. I try to keep that in mind every day. And like I said, I just try to move on and, you know, push through. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, as, as mayor of Aurora, I remember I gave my, uh, my speech at my inauguration and I made it clear. I made it clear that although I am the first African-American 180 years, I will be the mayor for everybody. Black, white, Latino, Indian, Asian, Auroran. That's all that, that concerns me. I will be the mayor for everybody. But I recognize being African-American. You know, what are some of the struggles uh, other African-Americans like me have to go through? Dr. Talley, let me, let me ask you another question. Different question. You know, even though as... Uh, Superintendent of, of 204, you are there for every single child in that district to make sure that they are successful. When they graduate from, from Indian Prairie, uh, can you tell me what path, directly or indirectly, would you say that, that, that you, you, know, you would make for other African Americans to follow in, in your footsteps? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think I try to do a little bit of both overt and covert mentoring. And what I mean by that is, there are many people in my, I'm very happy that I'm able to go into schools and to see people at work. And I use those opportunities to find out who is doing what well. And I wanna to talk to those people. And so what I wanna be able to do is every time I'm there visiting, I'm looking for talented staff. I will ask questions of people to find out more about these people that I think have potential. And I spend time talking with them, asking them about what their plans are. Have, their, have they thought about leadership opportunities and what they're going to do to earn the right credentials to get to that goal? Mm -hmm. I don't wanna to push too hard, but I'm looking for how, who are these people and how do I help move them in the right direction? because I think it's been said before by others, other people have helped us along the way and it's important that I'm there to help others along the way. Mm -hmm. But also my overt method is by leading by example, Absolutely. providing opportunities for people to shadow me, mm -hmm. telling people directly what I did well and what I could have done to improve. I think it's important that I, in my work, I tell people the mistakes I've made because no one wants to hear that you are perfect. They want to know that you've made mistakes and what you've learned from them. And you share those mistakes so that other people don't make them. 
And then I continue to check in on my people as they pursue their credentials. I actually, I bug them. I'm there to make sure that they're moving in the right direction. I'm aware of someone right now who I'm very afraid she's going to leave her doctorate on the table. She's done the work, but she's not finishing and getting across that finish line. And so my role in my belief in making sure that there are others who will follow me, because I'm not going to be here forever, <laughs> is to make sure that we, we nurture, we give them opportunities for success, an opportunity to showcase who they are, because someone did that for me. Not one, but many people did it for me. And I need to be able to give back to the others so that they can follow. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, Alderman Hartburn, I don't necessarily even need to ask you um, what kind of path that you left for, um, for people to follow, how many doors you left open for people to walk through. You know, I'm on the screen as the first African-American ever elected a citywide office as alderman at large and the first African-American mayor in 180 years. And it would not have been possible had you not been that first elected, you know, 30 years ago. You know, so I'm, I'm just going to ask you, what, what was your secret in, in uh, keeping that door open and blazing that path so others could follow? My secret was to treat everyone, to treat everyone like I want to be treated. Mm -hmm. No matter what race, creed, or color, you're important to me. Because love has no color, but I will say, the path that I was taught at home, that's the same path I continue on. Yep, everybody have a bump in the road. Sickness, pain, sick children, all of that. But I still had to keep it going. And I had to stay, stay, stay consistent. So for those that know me, know that I took care of my babies. And God bless me with a great husband. Learning how to be that strong woman came from a strong mother, but also strong kids. And not bragging, but through all my sickness, my kids all have degrees. Not bragging, but I, so I had to learn that I had to show love to everyone. You know why? And then I received it back. So you may see me with a big smile and I'm going to embrace you. Sorry, y'all, even in the pandemic. That's, what, that's how I was taught. We love everyone. And then the old saying is to thine own self be true. I've been true to me to show love to others and to help others. And I'm here to say again, I, if you put your mind to it, you can do it. And that's what I've done all these years to be a relationship. Look, with all the mayors, all the chiefs, all the other officers, all the community, I mean, the different pastors, some that's coming on, the different superintendents, I was there. I had to be there. I had to learn. I stayed at the school. Mattel was, everybody thought Mattel was my school. It is because of Gene Rowe, you know, it is, but that's what it is. I just learned to build relationships. I learned to build relationships. When I first came to Aurora, that was it, building the relationship and finding the seniors who has a wealth of knowledge. And guess what? I was, I would lend them to me. I would sit there and listen. And I started the program, taking a senior to lunch. I guarantee you learn a lot that way Absolutely. over the dinner table. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, we appreciate you, you know, treating everyone like you want to be treated. My grand's another one of the things my grandfather used to say, mm -hmm. you know, if you treat people like you want to be treated, you'll always get through life, life better. People will love you because you love them. Yes, right. you know, um, Ms. Thomas, let me ask you, um, if you could uh, tell a young person today, if you're talking to a young person and you can give them a little nugget about what they need to do to be successful uh, in life uh, as an African-American, what would you say? especially to a woman. Let me see, what, what would you say to a woman? African American young girl. Well, I would always, um, to, to the young ladies, I would say, you know, always um, present yourself, you know, as, as a young lady. Um, you, you know, I think, um, Let, let me back up. So if I was to give a, a young woman advice, um, I would first say, you know, when you go into a situation, um, work situation, um, any, you know, go in knowing um, who you are and, you know, go in with, with, with um, standards. Now, you know, we all learn things along the way. Um, 
and hopefully we're, you know, on a path of continuous learning, but, you know, we should um, go in knowing, you know, where our lines are, um, lines we will not cross, lines we will not allow others to cross. Um, and that, that is um, particular to the young ladies because, um, you know, there can be situations where, um, you know, there are some lines that perhaps um, might be different for young ladies. But with respect to anyone, if I could give um, young people advice, it would be to um, know that life happens. You know, you may have a plan. You, um, you know, you go to college, you finish, you know, you stayed with your major, you have your career all mapped out. Um, and you may or may not find yourself um, on that career path that you, that you um, envision for yourself. But I would say be open to every opportunity. Um, when you find yourself um, in a position, um, gain as much as you can from it, even if it's not ideal, even if it's challenging, there's something to be learned from every experience. And so um, be the best steward of the responsibilities you have um, for the time that you're there. Because when you go in with, an, with that outlook and you, and you learn you know, what to do, what not to do, um, when you learn from an experience, you will be able to apply it later you know, um, when you do find yourself um, as the superintendent of a, of a school district or, you know, um, as an alderman or, you know, when you finally feel like you've arrived, you'll, you'll look back and, and realize it was, you know, every, every job, every opportunity, it was for a reason. It was, it was to bring me to where I am today. Absolutely. Know who you are, recognize the confidence that you have in yourself and keep your eye on the prize. You know, right. we will definitely get there. Juan, brother, I'm going to close out with you, man. My brother, born and raised in the in the city of city of Aurora. You know, close us out and tell us, you know, what advice would you have for our young uh, black black men and women here in the city of Aurora, and uh, what do we need to do to continue to rise? Well, thanks again for having us tonight, Mayor Irvin. And I guess I would tell young people this. Um, Never underestimate the importance of relationships and to build relationships early and often in life. You know, Mayor, you and I are at an age where, and you and I have had these conversations, I am watching people in our generation become what they said they wanted to be when they were in high school or college or young professionals. You know, I went to college with Raphael Warnock, our new U.S. Senator. He was a year ahead of me at Morehouse. You know, we used to talk about our dreams and our ambitions um, back in college. You know, Mayor Irvin, I remember us as young lawyers talking about how we wanted to serve our hometown. And I think it's so critical that young people understand that your first or second job may be because of where you went to school or your grades and things of that nature, your test scores. But at some point, people stop asking where you went to school. People stop asking for your transcript. They wanna know what kind of person you are, what's your character. And they're not gonna ask you. They're gonna ask someone who knows you. They're gonna make a phone call. They're gonna say, hey, tell me about Sherman Jenkins. Tell me about Juan Thomas, tell me about Bill Powell. And what you've heard from all of us, at some point along our journey, someone opened the door for us. Chief Powell talked about the late Tom Weisner offering him an opportunity. That was because they had a relationship. Chief Powell could have been the best police officer in the town, but without that relationship, he wouldn't have gotten that opportunity. And I can tell you very honestly, there are doors that have been opened for me because of a relationship. And there are doors that have been closed to me. I may have been the most qualified or the most talented, but I lacked the relationship and the door did not open. And so I think it's critically important that young people understand, yes, do good, work hard, go to good schools, get good grades, but build meaningful relationships with your peers, 
those who are ahead of you, and those who are coming up behind you. Because we need to do a better job in our community in particular of working together and building relationships and staying in relationship with each other, even when we disagree. Let us disagree, but, let, but, not let, but let's not become disagreeable. Absolutely. That'd be my message. Absolutely, brother, absolutely. You know, um, build those relationships and keep them because we're all in this together. You know, let me close by, by reading Maya Angelou one more time. I am the hope and the dream of the slave, but still I rise. Thank you all for being on this evening with me and talking about what it is to be the first, but recognizing it's just not something we wanna be. It's the things that we need to do in our community to make a difference. And we're all doing that. You are all doing that. You make me very proud to be part of the Aurora family, all of you. I appreciate the, the hard work you put in making Aurora proud and making us rise. You guys have a good night. Thanks everyone for listening in and watching. Um, I appreciate it. And you guys have a good night. Talk to you later. Thank, thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Stay safe.